Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Michael Churchill. I work as a dental surgeon in private practice in Moscow. Let's imagine we have a patient that need to have tooth 11 extracted and the implant placed. We are planning an immediate implant placement and choose an implant 3.5 to 11.5. But due to some reasons, this patient has his tooth extracted somewhere else. In a few months, he comes back into your office and wants to have uh, an implant placed again. We do a new CBCT scan, plan to place the implant with the same parameters that we have planned before. But now, see that we need to do the GBR and soft tissue augmentation as well. We quite often uh, have patients like this when they have had their teeth extracted long ago in most of the cases in lateral area. On the contrary, in the static area, we quite often face a situation that it's not possible to place an implant or need to do simultaneous bone augmentation. This is additional trauma for the patient. Why does this happen? I think all of you know the investigation of Professor Araujo published approximately 15 years ago. It's an animal study on dogs, which shows that as soon as tooth is extracted, we have expect rather distinct changes. It is shown that in two months we face the bone resorption and the buccal wall decreases in size more than the oral. Interestingly, the bone resorption in uh, the coronal, coronal part can reach up to 43% horizontally. In the mid third and in the apical part, we can also expect resorption, but not so pronounced. But nowadays, in 2020, we understand that the soft tissues are not less important. We are aiming to obtain nice aesthetic result, which is possible only having good volume of the soft tissues. Thus, the most recent investigations are more about the soft tissues and this is uh, what the authors conclude. Three groups of patients were included in the investigation. In the first group, tooth was extracted. The socket left from spontaneous healing. In the second group, socket preservation after extraction was done only with the bone substitute material, Geislick Bios collagen and no membrane or matrix. And finally, in the third group, socket was, was filled uh, with Geislich Bios collagen and covered with the collagen matrix Geislich mucograft. This is supposed to, to be the full protocol of socket preservation. In four months, the soft tissues condition was evaluated. In the first group, soft tissue volume was of soft tissue volume loss uh, in the invagination was seen in 90% of cases. In the second group, soft tissue invagination was seen only in 53% of cases, while in the third group, where ghastly burst uh, collagen was covered with the matrix mucograft, only in 43%. Results of the third group are two times better than uh, those obtained after sp spontaneous healing. The other parameter measured in this investigation was the thickness of the soft tissues. It's important to say that only aesthetic area cases were included in this study from premolar to premolar. In general, average soft tissue thickness was uh, one and five millimeters in the second group, two and one millimeter. In the third, with the full protocol of socket preservation, reaching up to three millimeters. As for my practice, I would like to share with you a one really fantastic case. It's a young girl uh, with such a nice canine, which you see from first sight. 
the story is that long ago she had this tooth positioned a lot of vestibulary. She was offered to do orthodontic treatment, but she disagreed and chose the other clinic and other approach. There she had uh, this canine endodontically treated, post and core crown and uh, post and core and crown with such a contour. This post and core may be due to wrong forces dis distribution or its huge size was commonly lost. Moreover, this crown was redone several times and finally when she came to our clinic, my colleague, a prostodontist, told her that this tooth has to be extracted. No conservative treatment can be done. And the patient agreed. We do x-ray examination. Evaluate the canine. If we check the occlusal pictures, we see there is definitely not enough space for the canine. Thus, if we have these tooth extracted, the implant size that we could place will be two or two and five or four point five millimeters. Unfortunately, we don't have so narrow implants, and moreover, we will not have a nice aesthetic result. As we are in uh, 2020, we have nice contemporary orthodontic tools, except the traditional braces, aligners. Our goal was to obtain sufficient space for the tooth equal uh, to what we have on the contralateral side. Let's see a short uh, animation of the treatment. I'm sure uh, who treats uh, with Invisalign technology is very familiar with, the, with these kinds of videos. As you can see, yeah, it started. As you can see, we're not really moving the tooth. We were aiming to enlarge the space for the future. Finally, we got the same distance between 22 and 24 as we have between 12 and 14. This is how patient came to the surgical step. We see that we have spaced between the teeth, temporary crown in place. Let's think. We can extract this tooth and do immediate implant placement. But we have two aspects to be concerned about, soft and hard tissue conditions. Recession is approximately 10 millimeters. If we check the CBCT, we see that vestibular position of the tooth led to buccal bone resorption practically till the apex of the tooth. If we proceed uh, with extraction, we will have alveolar reach of each a form. Sure, sure, we can place a short implant and place some grafting material buccally, but we understand that we have a huge recession of a centimeter. How it heals only God now. That's why I have chosen my really favorite approach, socket preservation. It predictably gives me amazing soft and hard tissue volume. Not less important, it's a less traumatic operation for the patient. So let's go. The tooth to be extracted. Amazing soft tissues. The epithelization of the socket borders. Here uh, we see a period probe which goes one centimeter below the desired zenith of the tooth. This means the buccal bone is only there. Moreover, the soft tissues of seven millimeters is not enough to get highly aesthetic result. Here I take our favorite Geisley bios collagen and trim it to the shape of the root. Fill in the socket, uh, vestibular view, the full length saving all the parameters. And the collagen matrix Geislich mucograft seal on the top. In this case, I put only five sutures 
that was enough. All in all, the procedure took me only 15 minutes together with the extraction. We had no donor site here with no additional cuts, which means less pain and edema. The patient felt all that absolutely comfortable, a crucial view, and check how beautifully it heals. We use a Maryland bridge as a temporary here. In two weeks, we see that borders are slowly coming closer to each other. Soft tissues are formed. In eight weeks, we see that the socket is complete, completely closed. In 10 weeks, it looks more amazing. What is important, I have asked the prostodontist to place the Maryland bridge the way uh, that its zenith would be located where the future implants restoration zenith should be. I wanted to have the gum healing in the correct position. So we extracted the tooth and this is what we get. We keep in mind that if we hadn't done the socket preservation, we wouldn't have resulted in one or two millimeters white coronal portion. And now we see a nice contour as if uh, we have a root inside. Additionally, thanks to orthodontic treatment, we have enough of space to install the implant. While planning the implant placement, we are very relaxed. We have plenty of bone. The procedure would be simple and predictable. It would take 10 or 20 minutes all in all with anesthesia. Why? Because we have outstanding bone volume and tissue quality. Implant in place, small incision. Uh, yes, we could go flapless and do a guided surgery but I was really wondering what was inside. And as you can see, the soft tissue thickness was, was about three millimeters. A lot of bone vestibular. Sure, this bone is not yet mature. It will, it will be more dense in half a year or a year. Nevertheless, the bone quality is more than enough to place an implant with a good primary stability. It's done. Three sutures. Result in one week, two weeks. I'm happy the patient didn't have any pain, bruises, edema, nothing. Note an amazing quality of the soft tissue that we have obtained. It's fused with the adjacent mucosa. And we have the papilla and good volume. We have something to work with. So in eight weeks after implantation, we see the result. We managed to cover the recession defect. We could obtain good bone volume. We have the implant placed. It could seem in presentation that the process was uh, rather long, but all in all, only two surgical appointments, extraction with socket preservation and implant placement in four months. In four months, we placed a healing abutment, the X-ray and the crown. First, a temporary crown to form the soft tissues. In fact, we didn't have to spend a lot of time to get a good emergence profile because we had such a big volume of the soft tissues. We reached such a beautiful contour. We have seen about three or four millimeters of healthy, natural soft tissues vestibular to the implant. Implant position is prosthetically correct. Intraoral scanning. Here is our scanner, transfer, and a very natural crown. Here is the result. That is really good, I think. The zenith 
is located in the correct position. If we would like to, we could even correct it and place it higher. And CBCT in one year, three or four millimeters of bone vestibulary to the implant, no issues. Dear colleagues, I strongly recommend you to use this, my favorite technique in soft socket preservation. Use this technique and get uh, so beautiful and aesthetic results. Thank you for attention.